Welcome. On behalf of Minuteman, thank you all uh, for coming. I first want to introduce Steve Sterk, who's uh, running our audiovisual, and Steve is our Director of Outreach and Development at Minuteman. And Nancy Banks is with us. Nancy is um, on the Minuteman Regional School Committee from Acton, and you are one of the officers. I'm the, sec the secretary for the board. You were the secretary for the board. You'd think I'd know that right away. But uh, uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you uh, so much for coming. Um, the purpose of this is to fulfill a MSBA obligation where we need to go to all 16 communities uh, and ask for the opinions of those people who come here as to which preferred option you have or any other questions that you have related to the building. Um, and what we're going to do is, is I'm going to ask Nancy to hand out uh, some index cards. So if you have any questions, if you could write them out. Because we have 16 communities, we are submitting all questions and all answers to all 16 communities, and it will be on the website. Um, we are also going to have at the end a questionnaire for each of you to fill out. Um, and that, again, the MSBA is requesting so uh, we know what your thoughts are and what program you think we ought to go to. So that is uh, one of the handouts. Another handout which you had when you came in is a report uh, from the non-MSBA building subcommittee. Um, we thought not only are we going to take a look at the MSBA program, um, which is going to be a new building, a renovated building, new slash renovated, but we also ought to show the communities what would happen if, if one of the 16 communities voted down the project. We feel that there's no such thing as a no-cost option. Um, repairs are going to have to be done, so that report is done, and we were blessed by, on our committee of having people who have uh, quite a bit of experience. We had a couple of project managers who, in their real life, that's what they do. We have an architect on that. And we had a person by the name of Dana Ham who chaired it. And Dana is in charge of facilities for the Cambridge schools. He has 13 school buildings he's responsible for. So he was part of that. And with that, we used existing documents. We didn't hire anybody. We used existing documents. Um, to uh, write that report, and there'll be a little bit more on that later. And the final handout was from Skanska. Skanska is our project manager, and it goes into more of what the MSBA process is. So we thought it was important that you all had that. Our agenda is, is simple. It's, uh, we're going to discuss who we are, who Minuteman is, why we need to act, what we've done already, a look at our options, what is, going, what is it going to cost you, what is it going to cost you, Dover, in this case, why act now, and which options do you prefer is what we're going to ask you for. So who are we? Minuteman is your public career and technical high school where students who go uh, to Minuteman learn actively uh, the various subject matter. We offer rigorous academic courses. Our students must pass the same MCAST exams, the same exams that uh, students at Dover Sherbert do. Uh, we also very, our academic curriculum is also extremely similar to Dover Sherman's. We offer, in addition, industry supported career and technical education in 19 uh, career majors. Um, in many of our programs, uh, students graduate with their professional certifications in hand. And we offer sports drama, arts, just like any other high school. We have no-cut athletics, and we're proud to say that our basketball team came in, uh, was in the semifinals of the state championships this year. Um, our students, as I said, passed the MCAS exams, uh, just like any other students, and all of our students did that in the last couple of years. 65% uh, of our graduates go to college, and 33% go into uh, their careers when they graduate. There are 16 members in our community. And we, uh, just like the Dover Sherburn High School, uh, were started in 1972. Why we need to act. We have a video which we're going to play for you now. Our facility doesn't have the flexibility. It doesn't have the infrastructure. And in some cases, it's detrimental to what we're trying to teach our kids right now. Air quality, HVAC, 
The electrical system is not up to code. The plumbing system is not up to code. It's not ADA compliant. There's poor ventilation, poor lighting. Uh, if you look at the problems with the physical you know, building in terms of walls, windows, roofs, uh, it's, uh, it's energy uh, consumption is way above what it should be. Down in the trades hall, they have walls that don't fully reach the ceiling, so there's a lot of echoing and it's hard to hear in there. And I know environmental science and technology is on the third floor, which makes it very difficult for us to carry stuff up and down the stairs. We have basically six levels to this building. It's spread across 330,000 square feet. It's like a maze. It's confusing. It's all up and down. There's at least six tarps and probably seven five-gallon buckets hanging from the rafters to catch the leaks so they don't come down onto the gym floor so the students don't slip during gym class or sporting events. We have other um, areas of the building where there simply isn't enough natural light. There's not many windows around here. It's almost like a jail cell, but I think they have more windows than we do. We have a building that is stuck in 1975. If the building were to be improved and then the programs could improve even more so than they already are, I think that it would help because then towns could send more kids here and the kids could get like a much better experience. We have a duty to provide to our students our kids, our grandkids, a 21st century learning environment just like they would have if this school sat in your town. We want a building that honors the unique and varied learning styles of our children. If you don't do anything, you're saying we're not going to fulfill on uh, our commitment and endorsement from the school committee on the educational program specifications, that we're not going to take care of our building, that we're not invested in the future of Minuteman. Um, as you can see, the, why are we doing this? Our current uh, building conditions demand it. We also can enhance our educational programs by improving our outdated facilities, and our NEASC accreditation is currently in jeopardy. Current building conditions, you can read those. Basically, structural design uh, codes are all need work. There are problems with our roof, exterior shell, electrical systems. The building does not meet today's fire building codes and ADA handicap accessibility. It did when it was built, and that's important for you to know, but as soon as we start doing work, those things are affected. Roughly $100 million is needed just to repair the building, and uh, as I said, with a tipping point, once we start doing work in the building, uh, we are going to be forced to meet current ADA and building requirements. Uh, just going, you're going to see just a brief cut some pictures of the conditions of the of the building, uh, cracks in the walls, uh, our roof, which is uh, we have continual problems with. Let's keep going. Accessibility issues. We have a lot of accessibility issues. When you arrive at the campus and you walk in the front door, you have a flight of stairs to to climb right away. The second reason why we're doing this is really to enhance our education program. The school committee has endorsed a career academy model to support the delivery of high quality career and technical education. And this academy model creates a synergy, and the synergy uh, between both the academic courses and the career courses. We'll now have a video that uh, goes into that in a little more detail. We've spent probably hundreds of hours together in groups as a whole staff identifying the key components of an academy model for Minuteman. And what they are is two academies that are formed around the occupational programming that we offer. We have a life sciences academy and an engineering construction and trades academy and then shared resources of both of those houses. That academy model integrates curriculum in a way that simply can't be done in the building that we have right now.
building. This building was built in the 1970s on an open school concept. It was not built as the educational program is designed to bring collaboration among the academies. Just think about an academy for a moment. We have vocational technical teachers, and then we have academic teachers who teach their academics related to those subject areas from a career and vocational technical point of view. So we have math that's being taught in carpentry class in a way that's relevant to carpentry students. We have science and physics being taught to the biotechnology, to the engineering, to the robotic students in a way that's related to those occupational areas. So when you have a staff that's integrated like that in an academy model, you, it allows them a lot of flexibility, not just in how things are taught, but in when they're taught and where they're taught. We're no longer bound by the walls of the classroom. And as we get closer to it and people begin to study the model, we're seeing even more and more potential benefits of this academy model to serve our 16 member towns. Since I came here, I know exactly what I want to do. I fell in love with something that I'm ready to take on as a real career. And I've learned so much more than I would ever learn in a classroom. You're ready for college. You're more ready for college than you are if you went to a regular high school. Minuteman has a great program, and they're, they're known all over uh, for, for their program. But the, the issue is, is that the, the building is a problem. It's interesting. He talked about the career um, academies, and I had the opportunity to work with the faculty the entire faculty uh, Ed met with and they broke them into groups and they uh, had input and also students. There were approximately 60 students involved with, with helping to design the education program and I remember one comment in one of the rooms, one of the students raised their hand when somebody said, why are we here? And, and the students said, we know more about this building than any of the teachers do because we cover the whole building. The teachers just go uh, through a segment. So uh, the entire community was engaged in that. Uh, the current school was designed in the late 60s and built in the 70s as an open classroom design. Many of the schools back in the 70s, uh, that was the case. Uh, the design was fashionable at the time. It just really doesn't work today. Uh, the building was not designed uh, to configure in the current program. Actually, when you think about it, the career and technical program and the academic programs were designed to be separate and keep them separate, not bring them together the way they're uh, teaching today. Uh, also, the mechanical and electri electrical infrastructure does not support the current technology needs uh, in a school. Uh, and th this is where it talks about the separate academies and how uh, that we want to bring them together and, and not keep them uh, isolated. So simply put, the building was not designed to deliver a 21st century education. This is an example of what the career academies look like. Uh, you have your Life Sciences and Services Academy and one uh, and uh, engineering, construction, trades, and the other, and then the shared house. Shared house, if you go to the next one where it says shared houses, where all the academic programs are, uh, the humanities, the guidance offices, math, uh, foreign languages. Interestingly enough, at Minuteman we teach Latin. Uh, so we uh, have three uh, foreign languages uh, at, at, uh, at Miniman. We have a Life Sciences Services Academy, which is where you find your biotechnology um, and your robotics horticulture, and then in the engineering and trades, that's where we're dealing with not only the trades of carpentry, et cetera, but also robotics, multi-engineering, and a whole new program which we're talking about putting in, which is advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing is using highly technical computerized machinery along with a welding component and medical, um, uh, metal fabrication. Uh, the NESC has cited uh, Minuteman for uh, discrepancies only in the facilities. When I think back at Dover Sherbin, when we did the Dover Sherbin High School and the Middle School, exact same morning, helped turn Dover Sherbin into uh, moving ahead in the, in the, in the uh, building. The letter is almost exactly the same when I looked at them. What have we done already? Uh, in 2009, along with the MSBA, we were brought into the MSBA program and we launched a feasibility study. We formed a school building committee. We've hired our consultants. Uh, and in 2014, M uh, the MSBA granted us an extension. We've been in it longer than any other school district. And when you're in the program, they're saving money. They're reserving money for you. And we've been in it longer than anyone else 
so they've extended it until June 30th uh, of uh, 2016. We've also adopted, as I said, a new education program. The building uh, established a student enrollment of 628 students. As you may recall, we were over 800 now, but that's without a district students. Until the last two weeks, we were not allowed to charge a facilities fee for out of district students. Now the Department of Education has passed a regulation that we can, uh, but we are still building a, a school designed for in district kids. We also lock in a 40% base reimbursement. If you go into the MSBA program now, it's a 31%. We locked in the 40% reimbursement, but that's only good until June 30, 2016. Um, we developed, as I said earlier, a plan B, which is what we call, we said there's no such thing as a no cost option, and that is a repair only option, and that report is in the back of the room. Let's look at our uh, various options. There are three that the MSBA is having us uh, look at right now. First is just a renovation. Renovation that will include our education uh, program. Um, with that, we would retain the 40% reimbursement. We retain a heating and cooling system, which we put in about seven years ago, um, which we uh, did in partnership with Siemens Corporation and an energy saving uh, program that didn't cost the towns anything. And for $3 million, we completely updated our uh, systems. Um, the work, the limitation of it is work would be done uh, during, uh, while school is being occupied. Option one is the uh, current building. You can see the current building just as it is now with the athletic fields. It's located in Lexington. We would not change the footprint at all. Actually, the building is too large for the programs that we would be putting in. Um, option two is a renovation addition. Again, that preserves the 40% state funding. The career academy model is achieved, and there would be an additional cost for demolition. As you look at the next picture, looking at it from right to left, that open space on the right that looks like a field, that's where the building is currently. That would come down. The building would be expanded uh, to the left. Um, and going towards the current athletic fields. And uh, most of your trades, uh, your um, career and technical things would be done on the left. You see that oval uh, circle to the left of that. And the shared house is more over to the right. A new building, uh, again, qualifies for the 40% reimbursement. That's a 40% base reimbursement. We would hope to be able to add another five uh, plus percent uh, doing certain uh, requirements from the MSBA. Um, there'll be major, obviously, structural and educational improvements, um, and there'll be minimal class disrupt disruption because we could be uh, occupying our current old building and before we move into the new. Uh, there is an additional cost, although the cost is calculated in, for demolition. MSBA says they don't pay uh, for demolition of a building. Not true. In part, sometimes they'll pay for part of it, so that would be uh, an argument we'd have to do. But we need to solve what's going to happen to the old building. Uh, this shows the new building on the left. The new building on the left is located now in Lincoln. Um, there is a small little stream that runs through the campus. On the right-hand side is Lexington, and the left-hand side is Lincoln. Lincoln and uh, Lexington have worked very cooperatively with us in terms of, of the building and uh, what uh, requirements would be needed. This would, is an example of what the new building would look like. Uh, on the right would be your more of your trades hall, which is where uh, your construction, your automotive, all that would be, and on the left, is um, where robotics, uh, greenhouse would be, et cetera, and in the middle is the shared building. The self-funded options, again, are the non-MSBA options. Uh, we've looked at two. One uh, which shows the repairs with the educational improvements, and the next one would be just uh, the repairs. Um, this is if we do not get approval in all of the 16 communities. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, repairs only, uh, again, this would not include any uh, of our educational programs. Here's the preliminary costs. These are preliminary costs. Um, once uh, we uh, recommend to the MSBA a preferred option, uh, then the MSBA is going to take that uh, recommendation, which we are now gathering from you all here in town, 
um, what your recommendations are, and then we will go to the MSBA, and they're going to basically pick one, two, or three, which is the one we would do. The um, total cost is the total gross cost that we are uh, guesstimating now would be the cost to do the buildings. The district share uh, applies the 40 percent reimbursement from the state, um, which is, would not apply for options four and five, and the project duration is how long we think it would uh, be for uh, construction. Um, it's interesting to note, if you hit those trigger points in options four or five, that uh, 10 years could be reduced down to uh, five or six years, uh, which is a very, uh, that would be very concerning because this would automatically, the towns are going to have to pay for that. We're not going to have any choice to opt out. Uh, so th those are your programs um, that you have. Um, this is under the current agreement. What is it going to cost over? If we do not, uh, if the 16 towns don't approve, approve the regional district, this is what it's going to cost over, which would be an annual cost for new of 37.4, and the projected annual cost for medium household in Dover is $13.40 um, per year. That's under the current agreement. When you look at the revised agreement, those numbers double. And we uh, discussed that and had the opportunity last night to discuss that in Dover, what the effect is of the, the new regional agreement. This uh, points it out very clearly. Can we do nothing? We don't, we were, as stated earlier, we're going to have to do something. Uh, critical repairs are going to have to be done. And the next steps, um, right now, between now and the end of April, we're meeting the 16 districts, having this kind of a meeting. Um, and we are asking for citizens and town officials to give us their comments, their concerns, and what preferred option they want. And as a, you know, I'm going to hand out a um, piece of paper and ask you to vote on that tonight. Um, for May 2015, the school committee will vote, and they will make their recommendation to the MSBA. MSBA selects that preferred option 2015. After that, our, our design uh, team does schematic design uh, options, and they will have that done by December uh, of this year. And they will come uh, to the 2016 town meeting with our recommendations to vote. Construction would begin in 2016. Excuse me, construction documents are then created after all 16 towns vote for the project. 2016-17, uh, those documents are repaired and construction starts in 2018. If we did new, we're not going to see a new building until 2021, <coughs> and that's when your bonding hits at that, at that point in time. Uh, summary, why we need to act, we need to address the uh, building maintenance problems now. We need to create a working school environment designed for our, our students. We need to address our credit accreditation uh, issues. Why we need to act again? Again, it's that 40% reimbursement. If I have one job, it's to preserve for 16 towns a 40% uh, plus reimbursement rather than the 31%. Uh, we have one shot at that. It's going to be uh, expires in June 30th, 2016. If we get out of the pipeline, <clears throat> if we don't make it past 2016, we get out of the pipeline. There's no guarantee we'll get back in, and there's next to no guarantee that we would get back in for our repair option. Um, and this is based on our meetings with them. If we were able to get back in again, it's going to be a 31% reimbursement. We need your feedback, so questions, comments, uh, what option do you support, and why do you support it? And um, Nancy, if you could just hand out those sheets, that would be great. And I'll open up the meeting to the floor. Questions? Comments? It's just like last night. <laughs> Rick. Um, for those that don't know Rick, uh, I was surprised to see him. Uh, Rick uh, had a son that graduated two years ago. Uh, from Minuteman, and uh, Rick has relocated back to Dover, and his daughter has uh, started as a freshman uh, last month? Correct. Last month at Minuteman. So uh, Minuteman now has three active students at, uh, from Dover. Um, I noticed the, it's a repair versus a renovation option. Um, 
was actually more costly. It looked like it would take longer, and that kind of surprised me that the repairs, uh, the repair scenario would take take longer than a renovation scenario. I was hoping you could comment. Yeah, that's that's an excellent question. It's because when the building was built in '72 and the plans were done. I really hate to say this, but the plans have been accurate. And when we got into the building and we've had to do some major work in the building, the plans have not been accurate. We've had a huge contingency cost because of that. Uh, just this year, we had to replace the roof um, over a part of our building, a small part of our building, and it cost twice as much. So that's really it. It's because of repairing an old building when there's surprises behind those walls. That, uh, that is when we would complete all 16 town meetings voting for the building. So we're assuming that all ta uh, town meeting votes for the building, new building, would take place, that's 2016, by the end of June. Exactly. Exactly. So that question, just in case you didn't hear, is, is what was the magic of the date of Ju uh, June 30, 2016? And that's what the MSBA has said as our uh, date that we have to have this done by. Any other questions? Excuse me, Robin? All the towns approve it. Yes, the preferred option will be made this July uh, by MSBA. We're now asking the communities, the school committee is going to vote in May. Uh, and then uh, by July, the MSBA is going to tell us what that option will be. I'm assuming they're going to go along with what the school committee is recommending. But it's their money. It's their football. They can do uh, with what they want. Uh, so once that d uh, date is picked, then we uh, try to get all our schematics done, all our numbers done by January of 2016 so we can go out to all the communities and go through what the building will look like. We're then going to have drawings, etc. So I, I just can't remember the, the numbers that are presented for the renovation, the renovation and addition, and the new school with demolition. They're the same numbers that were used at the Warrant Committee That's last right. night. That's fine. So what is the, um, what are you losing in option one versus option two? So option one, you're renovating the existing facility. Option two, you're getting additional programs or additional space we're going to be able to meet all of our educational goals in option two and option one we will not be able to meet all of our goals so why are the costs so similar um i'm not smart enough to be able to answer that question i will tell you that what happened was is um each of the trades received this kind of a description and they put together their numbers and that's what it came out with. But that's a great question to write down on the card and, and then we'll uh, get an answer. I, I'll tell you, it's also interesting that the project duration is different. I, I, it's just not intuitive. I would have thought that the renovation was an addition would be a little more expensive and take a bit longer. Nancy, why don't you come up to the microphone just so. Um, you know, we had last um, school committee meeting and one of the things that was pointed out to us which Ed referenced in his comments is the size of the current building which is over 300,000 square feet 330,000 square 330,000 square feet which is a very large building and actually more square footage than we need so part of the issue which we were sort of grappling with these same issues is that when you have renovation, you have to renovate all this 300,000 plus square footage. 
and it's a lot of space, which in the new building will be a smaller footprint. So how many square feet is the new building? Something like 200? I think it's about like 220. 220. I don't have the exact number, but I think... So, um, so the issue is that we have this very large, inefficient space, and if we just do renovation, one of the things we're still going to be ended up with this very large building. Um, so that is one of the issues associated with just doing a renovation. Jim. Um, 628 is the number, Jim, and it's, it's not that we're expanding, it's that we're reconfiguring the space. Um, the space would be totally uh, reconfigured differently. Um, if you look at advanced manufacturing, for example, uh, and we've seen examples of that at Worcester Tech and then and, and one other place, um, you have three rooms, let's say about the size of these rooms, and uh, one would be uh, welding, one would be metal fab, and another would be machinery. The machinery needs a pretty clean room, and it costs about a million dollars to equip one of these operations just from the machinery point of view, and we don't have a space that would uh, accommodate that. So if you're doing a renovation and you're trying to shoehorn things in, you're taking down a lot of walls and you're doing a lot of work within the existing structure. Does that help? Renovated buildings such as protective agency, the uh, uh, temporary space is important to keep things running, the storage, so forth. You just talked about, an item uh, that I was thinking about, uh, the equipment and all the existing educational tools in there. What will happen to those over the four or five years of a new, or two and a half years of a new building? Well, if you were doing a new building, they're going to continue to operate in the old building. And when the old building is completed, uh, then the students would move over the new building. When we worked up in the region, for example, we had the high school, and as I recall, and we tore down the middle school, we moved the middle schools, let's see if I get this right. We first did the high school, moved the middle school students into that, I'm not getting it right. We were able to use the two buildings and move students around. Thank you, I got confused. <laughs> We did show where the new one was, and if we could go back to that, please, Steve. Um, and we also showed, this is the new building. If you go back one more slide, on the left is the new building, which is located where the current football field is. And then where the athletic fields are, and this picture is where the old building is. If you go back two more, um, this is a renovation building. We took about a third of the building off on the right. We just took that off, and we added space on to the left. Carol. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, press about uh, partnerships between uh, corporate Massachusetts and some of the universities relative to uh, skills that are needed. Is there any partnerships plan with uh, Minuteman and yeah, That's an excellent question. The question is, re is related to partnerships um, outside of the academic community in terms of our businesses that are up and down 128 and 495, as well as partnerships with schools. We already have partnerships built in with our, our community, two of our community colleges, um, as well as some other schools. What if you take a look at what Worcester did, 
Worcester Tech, when they built their school, they uh, had a very strong partnership with the Worcester community and with the business community. And they provided much of, we call it furniture and fixtures, they, uh, uh, of that equipment. And when you go through that building, there's a name in every single room of some corporation that uh, didn't do the bricks and bricks and mortar, but they did everything else. That is something that Minuteman is going to have to do. We have, in, by law, uh, Chapter 74 schools, career and technical schools, have to have partnerships with various uh, businesses because they help design the curriculum. Uh, like biotechnology, we are using, and I can't remember the names of some of the companies, Steve, you might know, but uh, they help design our coursework. They would do the same thing, and I would hope that they would also be asked uh, to help provide some of the uh, equipment that we have. So the answer is yes. When we went and looked at the design of the buildings, we went out not only to some academic institutes, but we also went out to uh, companies. And uh, when you looked at one of the designs where you see this circular thing, that came from a private company. It's how to build, uh, bring the, uh, the various programs within that company together. So I think we have to do that. We don't have a strong, uh, Worcester is a very unique community. I'm not sure we have that same kind of relationship, but we need to develop it. Uh, the answer is is yes. Those uh, those figures are built into these numbers. Uh, so this should be. It's not the total cost. It's not the the final cost. Um, these are estimated costs, but those numbers are all built in there. But they're inclusive of updating equipment. They're inclusive. Yes. Uh, excuse me, Robin? He said it may be a good thing to break out. Um, what Robin uh, has, has suggested is, is that we have a, a more of a breakout in there, and we could do that in the footnotes. Great idea. Any other questions, comments? I want to thank you all uh, for coming. Um, please don't leave. We're going to have you fill out a form. If you don't want to fill out the form, you can go to SurveyMonkey and fill that out. It's essential that every community uh, that we have some uh, record in there. This is not whether the Board of Selectmen or the Finance Committee approves the project. It's only to give us an idea of what preferred option uh, we should go through and any other comments. So, Nancy, if we could hand that out. And with that, I, I thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you all for attending.